Fitlag like Abdi, Danny Boy here, and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2 on the UK map. It's time for a back to the future, it's time to go off to the 1880s, we'll jump on board with a few trains, a few lines that we created, and then we'll, uh, yep, we'll, well, we'll uh, play it through to the 1880s. <gasps> see which new vehicles we get, what we've got to play with for the next couple of episodes into 1880 and we're going to start with this train, the Blackpool Cl uh, Crude Transfer 1 that heads up to York. So let's get it, I think 2 times speed is a, a pretty decent speed to go at. So there are a few trains on here, it heads up past Kendall and goes through the valley. There is a large tunnel that it has to go through. It's got a, quite an uphill struggle to contend with as well. The tanks look pretty beat up. Apparently they are London North Western Railways livery tanks, but they just sort of look the same. We're using the DX Goods train and that's looking, uh, that looks pretty beat up as well. It's cool. Train number 55. I do believe they all say train number 55. There may be some in reverse. I have added the cool little brake van wagon to the back of this train here as it heads off. It's got a, ooh, it's got a, it's got a nice clear path ahead of it, it looks like. I mean, there's no passenger train coming from Manchester to Kendall, so that's good. If it can reach this next, next set of signals in time, we should be pretty golden. Straight shot through down to roughly about York. York is where it normally uh, terminates and then oil gets transferred from York up to Newcastle. We are going to be heading or taking fuel back from Newcastle to York as well. That's one thing we're going to do. Here's another crude train. Now this actually looks like the crude type freight. So this means it must be on Crude Line 2. Yeah, it is. it's a different loco. It's got number 55 written on it as well. So the oil refinery, you can see there just in the background over past those wagons. Under this tunnel, yep, there's no passenger train or no passenger service to block us in, so that's nice. There's the little train that carries the machines from Blackpool to Kendall. little saddle tank engine there we go there's one of our crew trains it's obviously just came back from York so he'll head in which is nice uh, yep there's a lot of machines actually sitting at Kendall that need to be transferred so we'll maybe add a few more vehicles when we start the next episode onto there because this train is just delivered as well or maybe it's that is what the train delivered. Possibly. No passenger service here yet. There will be one there somewhere. And uh, we've got a couple of rails up here that are connected to basically nowhere. But we'll connect them up because I think we'll get a train that goes to uh, out to Sheffield. Ah right, here's the intercity train, one of our Cramptons heading down few people on board there, that's nice. So around the back of uh, Kendall here, heading for York. No train utilises that line as of yet, but there will be at some point. Uh, I'm thinking about getting a train from the oil refinery Carlisle and sending it down to Manchester. Round the back where the Sheffield beef line sort of resides. Here's another one of our tanker trains. So it looks like they're sort of bunched up definitely at this side the Kendall Blackpool side of the map. Bit of weirdness going on there but nothing too untoward. We could maybe fix that at some point. I think I will fix that at some point. There's another Crampton. So that means the London Northwest Western Railway intercity trains some of them are bunched up together, which ain't so good. But it's good that that one's being held there. 
Oz. It uh, will space them out, so that's nice. Right, now this section is pretty flat that will be going uphill just shortly, just as it goes into this tunnel. So 33 miles per hour top speed is not sort of that phenomenal. <laughs> pretty decent. It's not the best, right. Up the hill we go, there we go, there it's, it's going uphill now. Starting to lose a bit of speed down to 31. Now it does peak in this tunnel and then it will head downhill where that brake van will probably be needed because it is quite a fair downhill descent. Now up around this corner, I think we can maybe see it better from there. Yep, there. There is where the hill peaks and then we'll be heading downhill. Look at this though, it's awesome. Now there is six trains on this line, I've not seen any for a while. I'd like these maybe perhaps to be spaced out a bit better as well so that oil is like constantly, crude is constantly being delivered. One train goes in, the refinery uses the 70 that gets delivered and as soon as that 70 is up another train appears with 70 that would be that's the dream really <laughs> right so the tunnel there is light at the end of the tunnel it will be heading down there it's going downhill uh going at its top speed of 35 i think its top speed might actually be 37 but i think the wagons might be limited to 35. Nice tunnel there. Nice beautiful sunny day as always. There we go. What does that cloud look like to you? I'm gonna say nothing. Right. So through the volley, uh, Newcastle is up there somewhere. York, uh, Sheffield is over here somewhere. And York should be directly in front of us. Although it is sort of masked by this mountain. In front of us, we actually turn before that, though. Excellent. One train is waiting there. There's a... Looks like a, the oil train is heading out. That's just a little saddle tank train with a few wagons. There it goes, heading off. There's one of our great northern railway in our city trains. We'll be jumping on that route next. I have a little saddle tank heading off. This road to Newcastle is fairly unused but I don't know where it actually goes. I think it just goes to Sheffield. There we go. A little oil train heading out there. Now we will have that oil train deposit oil and pick up fuel for coming back. And there's some oil spare. Right, excellent. So that is that route now complete. Into the station we go, deposits at 70. There's a slight excess waiting there, and we've got some new stuff. We're in August of 1871. So a couple of London, Brighton, and Southern Coast Railways. C class, C class, C class 060. Hmm, they all look the same. Ah, right. One. Two will be forward facing, the other two will be reversed. That's what that should be. Right, now let's find a Great Northern Railway train. Right, there's none at the station at Newcastle. Let's check down the bottom. See if we've got one at London Station. That is a negatory. Right, let's pull up trains. Uh, hello, yep. Right, who are you? London North Western Railways in our city. Luton Leicester Express. Uh, Great Northern Railways, one is there. One is there. Okay, are there any? One is there, which means the next one 
will possibly be going down in New York. Right, so there's not really one. Currently in a nice place at the moment. I know where there will be uh, trains at a nice place. And it's another line we're going to jump on. And it's over here. This cattle train. Yep. Now you should be waiting for a full load. If no, I'm going to change you to wait for a full load. Boost plate. Right, it's almost full. A couple more. Uh, eight, no, five, six more. And then it'll be good to go. Grain is being delivered constantly. So that's nice. 36 grain in stock. And this is going hell for leather, apparently. Right, once it, there it is, on its merry way. Let's jump on board. Now this heads round the back of Manchester. Uh, to that new uh, freight station we built. Now I'm going to deliver the fuel into that freight station. The fuel from Carlisle. And I'm going to change up the the Carlisle fuel uh, station to make that a bit more better. Right, so we're heading off over this bridge. I quite like this bridge. It is slightly large and excessive. I might change it to make it just smaller, just so that it's just archway over rail. And not like archway from this point for about a quarter mile into Manchester. But right now it's okay. So uh, the trains we're running here are a mix. Uh, this one could possibly be, this is a 060, uh, just in London Northwestern Railways livery. So it's like a generic train, it's pretty cool, like that steam valve, <coughs> or is it a valve, valve handle, looks like a valve handle. Uh, shiny shiny chrome hook at the front, can't actually see what it says on the side there, but it's pretty smart. We're using the London and Northwestern Railways generic wagon, so they, these things haul everything, you name it, these things will take it, which is awesome. Over the bridge, there is the Manchester to Leicester train heading under there. Sweet. And it's normal busier than that. But here we go down into this other freight station that we've created here in Manchester. Now this the other station was getting a bit we'll say excessive. There was a lot happening there. There's a mix of freight and passengers going into that station. There we go, there's another train heading back. Nice. Now we just bypass the station, we don't actually stop. But the fuel can come from Carlisle round this back area and into here and then we can start getting trucks moving from the six. There's a lot more space over here and uh, we may even do passengers potentially. I might cut some of that freight station down. I'll try and keep all the passengers in at one side. I mean, we could have potentially passengers from Sheffield or York even going to Manchester. Right, I think this is going uphill, so it will be slower. 29 miles per hour. Lots of trains. They're sort of mixed trains on here. DX goods. This, these zero six zeros. Some are reversed. Some are forward facing. All the wagons are, 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 are identical. Because we're also taking grain on the way back. A lot of grain. Actually, there is a crap ton of grain being transported back the way. 
So the grain farms with the double industry producing mods do actually do quite well. Obviously once trains are bigger, platforms with uh, masses of grain will become a thing of the past. But right now, they do just fine. Right, there's one heading back. It looks like a DX Goods. Yep, it is. There we go. London and Northwestern Railways. Right, this bit's a bit strange. But that's okay. It merges on with another line here. Don't know what that other line is. Don't think there's anything using it at the moment. I think I was going to use that for potentially passengers to Sheffield <coughs> at some point. Right, you... Ah, so there is something using it. Why are you waiting? Uh-huh, let's spin it around. What's this train heading up here? Now, you shouldn't have to wait for this train. You should just be able to go, because you carry on down the right side. So there must be something behind us. Unless there's a, there's a few trains in front of us. Check that signal. Oh, it's... What? I think... There's a train in front. Yeah, there is. There's a train down the hill there. Okay, so we've got queue and trains. That's okay. It keeps a steady flow. And they are now picking up full loads at each side. Right, back over this way, I think. We don't want to be clipping through the trees. Oh, very nice. Now, these little cattle cages are, or livestock cages are quite small, so must be chickens. <laughs> or baby cows, or baby sheep. Lambs and calves. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's one. Are you the culprit that was holding me up? I don't think you are. I think there's another one, because this signal ain't changed. Yeah, there's one actually in the station. Now, we should be bypassing Sheffield right now. Is Sheffield on a wild hill like this? I don't know. Yeah, there's one in, but it's heading out. That is. We can't continue on. There's one of our Great Northern Railway trains there, so if this one moves on we'll be able to jump on that train which will be nice because it looks like it's popped out of York and it's heading up for Newcastle at the moment there is one also on the way back but we've missed that one yeah York is over there somewhere is it there's the oil line Right, so you are going terribly slow. Ah, we weren't three times speed now. I thought we were. Right, there's the unused passenger station <coughs> at Sheffield. We will be using it. Possibly a line out to Manchester. Uh, we could definitely get a line out to Leicester. Yeah, yeah lots of train traffic here. But that train is basically in, so we'll see that it is in. Right, we've got some new stuff. More London, Brighton and South Coast Railways. Uh, these look like freight trains, so that's nice. Couple more. Let's go and find this Great Northern Railways train. Oops, you're not Great Northern Railways train. You are. Right, perfect. It's going into the station now. <laughs> So we're up to 1873, another year gone. Now I'm going to change up these consists because I think 
they are not supposed to look like that. I think I know what they're supposed to look like. I think. Right, off we pop. Sweet. Right, so, the Great Northern Railways, Starling, 8 foot, I believe it's called, heads down from Newcastle to York. From York to Leicester, Leicester to Luton, and then into London Town. Which is nice. And these things are actually getting fuel, which is awesome. Now I've got a plan. We are going to add a second oil train. Like this one in the background. But we're going to have one of them run back empty and the other one run back with fuel. And that will be that sorted. But the service does quite well, the Great Northern Railways in our city. It does make a profit. I mean, it's only 25 or 77 filled there, but there was a train just in front of it. So this train and the train in front of it aren't really spaced out that well. Now, ideally, we want to hit the next train somewhere between York and Leicester. That would be good. There's the little oil train there. You're getting a, a duplicate. You're getting a buddy. <coughs> we'll perhaps use one of the new, newer generic trains that we got. I think that's going to be first episode. Is getting more fuel up and going because I think we can definitely send fuel to Manchester. Definitely send fuel uh, back down to York. It looks like we're getting slightly more oil being delivered, which is nice. Yep, and there's still some crude there. We just need to up tempo in that, and the reason uh, the easiest way up tempo and stuff is basically to add more demand. So add another city, and then we'll be good. This is a really nice model, though. No sign of the other train yet. Oh, we are heading in the tunnel. This thing is pretty much doing 60 miles per hour, which is ace. Is that its top speed? 61, still going. These carriages, these uh, here, are good for like 75. Now the other train is there. So that's not that great. So this train is sort of stuck in the middle. It means probably mean there's means there's a large section between London and Leicester where there's no train in it. There is a third train somewhere though. We'll see where that actually is. It still gets 28. <coughs> and imagine the service in front is pretty much running. Probably not full, but near few uh full. You've stopped. Why are you stopped? There should be no train in front of you. Now you can go. Well, that was weird. All right, three times speed again as we head down to Leicester. <coughs> now, it is quite a busy station, Leicester, there's a lot happening. Lines from Birmingham, Manchester, soon to be a line from Sheffield. Uh, there are grain wagons going past, etc, etc. Lots of stuff happening. There is also a Luton to Leicester Express line as well. Looking good though. Heading out. We've pretty much used most of our London Northwestern Railways trains. I 
I'm just messing about with the speed there. Yeah, that's three times speed. So it looks like this one will hit 60 miles per hour as well, which is awesome. There we go. There's the other one. That's the fourth one. So there is one in front of this that should be probably London side of Luton. So that's not too bad. There we go. Into the station. Busy station. There is a train. Don't know which train. There's a green train. Heading along. That consist is actually wrong. The brake van at the back should be in a touch, but it's okay. We'll leave it. We'll leave it different. And these these consists are actually wrong as well. I know now which configuration they should have. And I will change those for the next episode because the London North Western Railways also has. Uh, the sort of same wagons, same configuration, so I'll change those as well. So heading down to Luton, should be a pretty decent run. Here is the Luton Leicester Express train. I think that's a London Northwestern Railways. It is sweet. Love having the different varieties of steam trains and wagons and stuff. It's awesome. Forty-two miles per hour. Forty-three. Let's maybe get a, as the crow flies, a bird's eye view. Looks like there's a stone quarry there. There were birds, there's the birds. In standard V formation. Oh, looks like there used to be a road there. There is Oxford. Oh. <laughs> Oxford to somewhere express there. Oxford to Cambridge. Yep, there we go. There's the London Northwestern Railways in our city. That's looking pretty beat up, actually. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. I'm going to change that though. I'm going to make them smaller. There we go. And their passengers are loaded. Off we go. Our doors are closed. Off we go. Down into the tunnel heading for London. Uh, better go this side actually. Now there's no passing train. <laughs> We've passed all the great northern trains. Uh, they're all heading... Well, I would say at least one of them is probably heading southbound again. Oh, no, there's one there. Oh, awesome. Okay, that's cool. Now, he's just picked up from London, so this train won't get a lot. I think that train maybe must have got held up somewhere uh, previously. There we go. There was a London Brighton and South Coast train. Uh, was heading out there in the distance. Round the corner it goes. <coughs> and there we go. There are, <coughs> there are still a lot of people waiting. Which is nice. And then it heads back. There's a lot of people waiting for whatever that is. Poor condition, poor condition, poor condition. And we've got seven vehicles. Ooh, we've got a lot of stuff. Right, let's come out of there. Let's hit up a depot. We're into 1875. So, buy vehicles. Right, go to Steam. Right, now, there's a couple, one in here. The G3, the London North Western Railways G3. Looks like a freight train. The London Northwestern Railway is branded Prussian G3. Now the G3 comes as a standard vanilla in-game train. So that is in phase one. We'll have to remember that. Now there was the precursor class. There it is. 
1874 to 1911 it does 50 miles per hour passenger traffic excellent uh, what else did we get they're still the same we've got the London and Brighton Designed by William Strowley, the C-Class freight engine was an extreme example of the many six-wheeler heavy freight engines that would be common across England and Scotland. Despite, despite, their, abil, uh, <laughs> despite their reliability, the C-Class suffered from poor steaming, creating too much when idle, yet not enough when running, and were considered Strowley's least successful design. A stark contrast to his passenger engines, Despite this, the C-Class continued to be run on secondary freight duties. So we'll, we'll use that for freight. This looks like a freight number as well. D1 tank survived the grouping of the London, Brighton and Southern Coast Railway into the Southern Railway. The last D1 was withdrawn in 1951, a full 78 years after the first was built. Wow, it's pretty good. D1 was designed to perform heavier tasks than the earlier A1 class. Wait, is the... that's an A1. Mm-hmm. So these look like freight. Demands, heavier trains grew, the useful... Still in spite of this, the engine was marked with a long life. So I think these can be used for freight or passengers. Uh, we've got this 60 miles per hour. This definitely going to be express passenger local yet. And the Prussian G3, which was a freight train, but that's okay. Freight trains are fine, right? Did we get anything else? Passenger wagons? Now. I was speaking about the consist. I think it's one of these. Now you only have the one facing that way. I think it should be that first. So add that. And then like these in the middle. And then this at the back. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Now this one can obviously just do that. And that at the back. We can't turn that one around. But I think that's what the, co the consist is actually supposed to look like. So I'll change those up so that we get those consists. But right now, we're done. We're done on the Great Northern Railways line. Uh, let's select another one. We'll head up to Scotland. We've got a few new lines up there. If there's one in Glasgow or near Glasgow, we have, right, the Highland Inner City. Let's jump on board with this train. Right, so this one goes from Glasgow up through Stirling, Perth to Aviemore and then round to Inverness. That other train was a Glasgow, Stirling, Edinburgh. Uh, sort of small inner city there. We should really call it the Central Belt inner city because Glasgow and Edinburgh are basically what we call in Scotland the Central Belt of Scotland. <coughs> and then you've got the Highlands, the North East, the West Coast, etc. The borders. Right, so, we're heading off. This train, just a generic 060 in Caledonian Railways livery. Now, this one is fairly beat up. It's obviously not shiny and new anymore. That is okay, though. Uh, we should pass a few trains en route. There are three trains. Uh, on this particular route. It doesn't seem to be very popular and we've now added the Aberdeen to Glasgow Central Scotland uh, in our city 
which also comes through Perth and Stirling and out to Glasgow, but it also heads up to Dundee and Aberdeen. So people may be using that. There we go, there's one of them now. I mean, there's not many people waiting for that train. There is not many people waiting for this train. Now that could be that the train in front is actually just that, just right in front of this train. It had eight people, it maintains eight people. Are these doors open? They do. <coughs> Holy crap. That is some jump from platform to... That's pretty dangerous. Doors close, off we go. Other train heading away there. Spin this round, please. Come on, there we go. <laughs> right, there is in fact one of those trains now. It's a Central Scotland train. Nice, looks good. So we're heading up the hill here, then we we'll go through the highlands. Uh, I think we'll hit Perth first, and then we'll be on RV Moor. So Perth's got quite a nice little railway station. It is just a two-track uh, two station, if I remember. On one side, you've got like high-sided mountains, and the other side, you've got trees. And if you look through the trees, you do actually see the river. There's a river that runs through Perth. It's quite nice, actually. So... Obviously it's not simulated here, there's no river, uh, even though it's a large experimental size map, it doesn't take into account like, the sort of rivers, like the Thames, the River Tay, the Clyde, the Firth of Forth, the Severn, all these rivers in the UK that sort of run through the cities. Right. Hey, you've got 35 passengers now. See? Top hat man. Weird American uh, lady with bonnet. Did they have... I think they, they had those in the UK as well. Sure they did. Right, there we go. There's one of our little bossant in the background. There's a central coast train there. This train managed to catch up fairly quickly. Now that is heading off to Dundee now. So that is actually a route in real life. Uh, so is this one. But we're heading up to Aviemore now. Aviemore is a very nice place. Uh, I used to go snowboarding up in Aviemore quite a lot. Lots and lots of mountains. Uh, there is a funicular railway uh, that takes you to the summit if you want to go skiing and stuff, or if you just want to go up and have a look. There's a nice little cafe shop at the top of the mountain there. It's very nice. The funicular railway is pretty cool. It used to be a chairlift that used to scare the living crap out of me. It was like, whoa. It was ancient. It was so dodgy. Uh, it was pretty, it was okay. <clears throat> but the seats were like like wooden, hard wood seats. You'd really, your ass would be in bits uh, by the time you got to the top. But it did take you to the top. You went up like halfway, and then you jumped on another one. Ah, oh, nightmare. There used to be a, like a plank at the bottom for your feet. You used to rest your skis, or your snowboard, whatever on the plank but then as it would reach a tower section and there's obviously the runners for the cable <laughs> it would vibrate and sort of bounce about quite violently and I almost lost uh, my snowboard almost slid off of that plank a few times I actually started uh, using like the strap that goes from my bindings to my boots and stuff <laughs> I actually started using that, tying it around my hands, so if the snowboard went, it would still be attached to me. And hopefully not drag me down with it. It was great when you were a kid, uh, the chairlift, but once you got older, 
you sort of realize like holy crap this is ancient this thing could just go at any time <laughs> it's one of the things that happens when you're when you're older when you're young you sort of have no fear and then when you sort of realize physics gravity uh, erosion of structures you uh, <laughs> you sort of second guess stuff like my uh, my grandfather and uh, my uncles had fishing boats, large fishing boats. Uh, they're called Persine vessels. Now I used to go away with them when I was a kid. And when I was in a boat in a storm, I loved it. I thought it was great. That was the coolest thing ever. Obviously, completely unaware of the perils of ships being lost at sea in high seas or stormy conditions. You just didn't bother about things like that when you were a kid. And then when you're older, you sort of think, well, oh, holy crap, I could die here. <laughs> but yeah, oh, it was Avi Moor. Very nice place. Beautiful scenery. It's always busy. Uh, you get a lot of skiers, snowboarders in the winter. Uh, lots of people doing mountain climbing. Uh, the summer is also very nice as well. It's a beautiful place. A lot of people go there just for the weekend. Uh, there are lots of like holiday homes that you can rent for one or two days, week, month, whatever. And it's very nice. It is a nice place. It's a hell of a drive. If you're coming from where I stay, uh, the road's pretty, well, it's pretty treacherous, actually. I've seen a few people wipe out on that road, unfortunately. But yeah, once you get there, beautiful place. It's got some nice restaurants, cafes great. It's got a golf course now. It used to only have a nine hole golf course. Uh, I think now it's got an 18. <gasps> but yeah, it's nice. It's a very nice place. Now Inverness as well. Heading to Inverness, our final stop here. Inverness is quite a nice place as well. It does have a river flowing through it. The... can't remember. I can't actually remember what it's called. Now I should remember. Because I've actually been on it many times. Lots of oil rigs from the North Sea get taken to here. To like where this river estuary is here. And they go there for uh, refitting or maintenance. Or if they're getting cold stacked and waiting for their next job. Mostly jack-ups and semi-submersibles, but that's where they go. Invergordon, that's it. Invergordon is where it goes. And there is a beautiful river that goes through Inverness as well, and the town is sort of built around it. So there we go, though. There's our Highland Express. Let's see which new vehicles that we got. A couple more London, Brighton and South Coast Railways, the D2 and forward facing and reverse. Right, where to next? Now I think we'll head down, we'll jump on board our new London, Brighton South Coast Railway coal route. Which is somewhere. Oxford, yes. Coal route is here, hello. And there's a train going in. Ah, oh, there's a train actually leaving from Chippingham off to... Is it coming? Are you coming or going? Ah, you're coming. Right, that's okay. Now we've got some new London Brighton South Coast Railways freight trains that we could add to this. This one doesn't actually have LB and SCR written on it. But it is the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway Jenny Lind model. So it seems like we've got a lot uh, the London and Brighton South Coast Railway trains. So we'll do a lot more expansion down here in the south. <coughs> it would be cool to see some like East Coast trains or something. I mean we're basically going to have most of the passenger lines built before the 1900s. But we'll be able to change them up as the times change as well. So that'll be interesting. But this route does take some much needed coal 
to our steel mill outside Newport because coal was really struggling. The Tidfall coal line, even though excessively busy, there's a lot of trains in it, doesn't make any money and it seems to be just severely unable to keep up with the coal demand that we actually need. The iron ore trains that run sort of next to it are totally fine. Uh, they managed to keep up with the demand. In fact, we had about 10,000 excess iron ore before adding this line. This line keeps the coal topped up. And now we're starting to burn, burn through that iron ore, which is good. Keeps those trains busy and in profit. But yeah, the Tidfall coal line needed help. This was the solution. The Chippenham Coal Transfer. Using London, Brighton and South Coast Railways trains, of course. Because it is fairly south. Probably should have been London, Northwestern Railways, but... We like this. Right, now there are a few trains on here. There is another one. We've got the appropriate liveried wagons. Hopefully they age a bit. They look a bit new and shiny for transport and coal. <coughs> Hopefully they get a bit dirtier as time goes past. But yeah, we'll be doing a lot more expansion in the south. And there's a lot of coal there, so we could probably have some trains shunting back and forth. Not sure what the top speed of this train is. But I might even use that standard vanilla Prussian G3 on this line because it has a top speed of 31. It is in the sort of light colored green that this train is. So it could probably pass off as a London Brighton South Coast Railway G3. I mean there is a London Northwestern Railways liveried version of it. So hey ho. I do like this train in reverse though. It's actually good that the reverse trains have a guy facing the actual direction that the train is going. Now when you have the forward facing ones, the guy is facing forward. And when you have the reverse one, one is facing the sort of the dash, the dials, etc. The other one is facing the back. So that's pretty clever. Or maybe the forward facing ones have that as well. Because you could have one guy facing backwards shoveling coal into the front, the other guy working the valves and watching where they're going. But this train now joins up to a main line that goes from Gloucester to Oxford. We're trying to get Gloucester to grow, so it uses more of that food at the food processing plant. Now that we've got a lot of beef, uh, running into said processing plant. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one still faces backwards. That's totally fine. Right, over this bridge. Quite a nice bridge. Quite a high bridge. Now, not every bridge in the UK will be going over a body of water. Some of them are just built like this to uh, sort of surpass areas like this where there's sudden drop offs. So, I like that. Now, I do like these stone bridges, and the UK does have a lot of, a lot of stone bridges. However, <coughs> <coughs> it's unfortunate that the speed does remain low on a lot of them. I think there is actually a mod to make stone bridges uh, have higher top speeds as trains cross over them. I'll have to resource or source that out. I'll have to have an investigate on to the workshop. So here's our train. There is an odd section here down in Gloucester. Now it looks sort of like Spaghetti Junction and it looks a bit weird. It actually does work. There's no ballast over rail here. If there was I would have deleted it because I hate that. It looks hideous. But that bit sort of looks okay. It's just that the rails are coming down at the perfect angle, fortunately for me. 
Right, back up here we should maybe see some express routes from Gloucester to Bristol or Gloucester to Newport. I think there's one back there that I just seen. Yeah, there it is. Leaving the station now. There should be others though. As we head into Newport. Newport! <laughs> Newport Steel Mill. Very, very, very busy. Through this signal. Dink. There we go. There's one of the express routes now. I think one of them's like a Borsig. The other one's like a Samson class. That could be the Samson class. Heading up there. Oh, there's another reversed southern coast train. There looks to be, I think it's an Aiden Ore train. Or is it? Is it a coal train? Right, this heads round here. And then into here. London North Western Railways. Yeah, I think that could be a coal train. It's a DX goods train anyway in light green. Right, let's come out here. Uh, we've got a new tram, finally. We can get rid of the horse and horse and cart trams. Right. How are we looking? Oops, game is trying to escape. Right, I think we've got time for one more route before we reach 1877. We'll head back up to Scotland. Let's see if there's one here. One's just leaving. It is the North East Scotland uh, Intercity running the standard vanilla borside with Bavarian cars, which I think looks quite nice, actually. I, even though they're not British, I don't mind running them at all. I think they suit this area uh, quite nicely. Now, if you guys watched the last episode, we did have a Borsig that was on a little adventure, off in a world of its own, gone AWOL, runaway train, whatever you want to call it. It went in a tour around Scotland, basically. It went from northeast coast to west coast, and then it went all the way down south to Glasgow, and then cut from Glasgow uh, all the way back up to the northeast, through pretty much almost every city in Scotland, barring... Harvey Moore in Edinburgh, and St Andrews. It did a tour of Scotland, which it wasn't supposed to do, and I'm not sure how it managed to do that. <coughs> Eventually it found its way back, and I have kept an eye on it, and it does run on its actual route now. No more of this high tail in it for world tours. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, this is the train that goes from Aberdeen to Elgin, uh, Elgin, Inverness, Inverness to Fort William. Now I don't know or can't remember if the train actually does go from Inverness to Fort William. For some reason I don't think it does. Uh, there did used to be train lines up to the northeast, up to Fraser Brown, Peterhead, it was the Fort Martin and Bucking line. My grandfather, or great-grandfather, was actually a steam train engineer, a driver. And then somebody in the government decided that trucks were the future, so they closed that section of the line down. Uh, so he obviously lost his job on the railway, uh, but then he became a truck driver. So, yeah, if you go from Aberdeen, between Ar Aberdeen and Fraserburgh, Peterhead, there are a phenomenal a phenomenal amount of trucks on the road. I don't mind trucks, they provide a excellent service, hauling goods back and forth. The problem with that section of the road, because that's the section of the road I use to get through to the office, or through Aberdeen, which is the largest city near me, is there are a lot of oil and gas equipment being transferred from Aberdeen to Peterhead because there's a large port at Peterhead that uh, 
is suitable for offshore supply vessels or safety standby vessels. So there's a lot of equipment and materials being transferred from Aberdeen to Peterhead. So there are a lot of trucks. There are also large fishing industry in Peterhead and Fraserburgh. So there's a lot of trucks with processed fish, fresh fish, blah blah blah, heading back and forth amongst all the trucks for farmers, livestock, blah. There's logging nearby as well, so, oh god, it's, there are a lot of trucks. They are thinking about rebuilding that bucking line. It's going to cost them something like 300 million, but it's pointless now. Everyone just drives. Where I live, you can drive to Aberdeen within 40, 45 minutes. It used to take two hours uh, in the morning for my commute, but they've recently built what's called the AWPR, which is the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route, uh, which is a bypass around Aberdeen, and they extended the dual carriageway to a place called Ellen. That sort of alleviates traffic up to Ellen. Once you get to Ellen, you get all the traffic from Ellen, Fraserburgh, Peterhead, Stricken, Cruden Bay, oh, Mint Law, all those places. There's lots of little places, and they all meet up in that one area, and it's a disaster. If they had extended the dual carriageway two miles down the road, all that could have been avoided. So, But it is a lot better. So yes, not sure if this continues on to Fort William. My one does, because I think it's really cool having this train go along the sort of banks of what I think is Loch Ness. It's been so long since I've been up Inverness Way. I've actually only been on the train from Aberdeen to Inverness once. Normally you just drive it. It is a really crap road as well. It's one of those roads that just sucks. There's a lot of slow vehicles. There's not many places for overtaking or passing. Again, there's a lot of freight on the road, a lot of farm vehicles. <coughs> In the winter, it's pretty much treacherous so there is a few guys I work with that actually stay in Inverness. Inverness is quite nice, got the river that heads through the city again so Invergordon yes right so we're heading up I think this large body of water is Loch Ness. Now there is a dam I would like to put the dam in, not particularly sure where the dam would go, but something I might mess about, because I was gutted that I couldn't get the fourth uh, rail bridge constructed. I did explain why in the last episode, it's because the fourth rail bridge uses the steel arch bridge uh, by Das Mats, is that correct, on transportfever.net site so you download it from there unzip the file place it into steam mods in your files section the file for me went on fine in the mods folder fine it appears on the start screen I have the ability to add the steel arch bridge but when I go to the depot train depot menu to purchase the bridge it is not there now apparently it doesn't work with save games and you need the steel arch bridge because it's sort of a template for the fourth road bridge uh, to be constructed so I kind of sucked because I would have loved to have done this back to the future drive-by with a train that went over the fourth road bridge fourth rail bridge there we go, we can actually bypass this, look at that, there we go. Look at that. There's the train popping out again, nice. Up to Fort William. Uh, we're going to clip through this road. Yep. I think we can stay with it. I'm so glad that they added the ability to do this. There we go, there's the train down there. 
Fort William just off in the distance. This is deep. Now there is large hills around Loch Ness, but there's nothing like this chasm of doom that you see here. It's cool. Now, this road as well doesn't have any bridges, but it does undulate up and down like that. If you were to drive it at speed, it would like be like being on a roller coaster. It's been so long since I've driven up past that direction. It's a really nice area though. If you ever get the chance, you should definitely go. There is the West Coast 400, which is like a 400 mile drive round like the west coast or round the coast up from Inverness and stuff it's very it's very nice I've not done it myself but I know people who have who have done it so apparently that's a really nice route but yep yeah, that train has arrived at Fort William we are into May of 1880 and we've got 25 new vehicles holy crap most of them look like wagons, but let's have a look. So first of all, in Fort William there should be a road depot of sorts. There it is, right, road vehicles, negative. No new road vehicles to report. Uh, train depot, well we know there's a train depot at Aberdeen, so let's head there. Now, new stuff. Steam. So, let's check the phase ones and phase twos. So, the G3, the London Northwestern Rail uh, Railways livery G3, is a sort of new one. We've now got seven here. The precursor class, the the two four two four foot six inch tank, London Northwestern Railways, and the cauliflower class. What an odd name for a class of train. So we've got three there. Oh, we've got one here in phase one, which is nice. DX Goods, still six. The Borsig, the Generics, still, they're all the same. Yes. Uh, the Starlin is still the same. Two variants of the class, the C, uh, C class. One in sort of yellow, one in sort of dark green, and it's pretty cool. Uh, one of those, two variants of that, although that's a 2T and that's a 0T. Uh-huh, confusing. G-Class 222, I think that's, yeah, definitely passengers. Look at the speed. Uh, the That one as well, possibly. Passengers. European cities. The engine was also known as the Lyons class after the first engine of its design. Number 300 Lyons. Cool. And we've got the standard G3 as well. So nothing in electric, nothing in diesels. Obviously, passengers, we got new stuff. Yep. So we've got 14 variants of these. Front brake. Okay, so British College bogey early, a ducket front brake, front brake, first class, third class, brake, front brake. What? How can that be front brake? rear brake <laughs> so what is ducket front brake I think that's the way the consist is supposed to look so that's the way we'll build it when the time comes 75 miles an hour uh, we've still got the earlies we've still got these these run a 1900 so that's pretty cool uh, now, Cargo, we definitely got some new stuff here. So, London North Western Railways Tanker. No, Tank Car. This was ah, so private owners. Wagons. Smith. 
Uh, not sure what that one is. Does it give a description? A direct Bristol 5 plane, private owner livery. Cardiff, yes, Buxton, cool. Something in Suns, cool. So that'll be really cool. Looking forward to using those. So that's all the train stuff. Uh, now, go to somewhere where there's a tram. Edinburgh, that's St Andrews, Edinburgh. There's the tram depot. So we've got this, the steam tram. Obviously Vienna, Austria. We are not in Vienna, Austria. Uh, we're in the UK. But we're still going to use it. We're going to get that up and running. That's cool. Uh, now, ships. I did see the Denara Castle up here. And I think we'll be replacing... Yep. We'll be replacing definitely the Rigis and Wilhelms with Denara Castles. Because they do both mixed passenger and freight. But that is it for all the vehicles. We're looking pretty good. Uh, in fact, we've not jumped on down here in a long time. We've got a few trains on here. Let's jump on with this one. There we go. But yep, yeah, that is going to be it for this episode. As always, if you did watch this and you'd like to leave a like, comment or dislike, please feel free to do so. And if there's more you would like to see in the future, then hit that subscribe button. I've been Danny Boy. This has been Transport Fever 2 on the UK map. And I will... Catch his later.